Good afternoon everyone, bienvenidos a Ciudad Obregón and Estado de Sonora in northern Mexico. I'm just in the downtown area at the moment, watching buses go by and this video is my first one from Sonora and today we are doing another one of my 30 minute 4k walk arounds, all films in one shot. The next video will be the one where I do my regular travel style video. So obviously in that one, I will go to a lot more places across the city and go into a lot more detail. But for today, we're gonna have a look around Obregón to give you a bit of a initial idea as to what this city is all about. And I've purposely started off in this downtown area because it's a little bit noisy, it's a little bit chaotic in a good way. I like chaos and we'll be heading somewhere at the end which will actually be the first stop of the next video. There's a supermarket up there which I go to to do my weekly shop. Actually, I'm gonna go down here, yes. Now, what do you think of Obregón so far? It's certainly not a southern Mexican historical central city, is it? Yaki, that's the indigenous people of this area, which I'll no doubt touch upon in the next one. You might be thinking, oh, David, why are you down this crummy alleyway with trash and puddles and graffiti? Well, um, you should know by now, <laughs> this is kind of my sort of area that I like. Let's go to the left get back onto the main street. Hopefully I, don't, hopefully I don't lose track of where I'm going. Uh oh, copyright music. Let's walk quickly. Ah. <laughs> he stopped it. Typical Mexican street with things for sale by locals, socks, pizzas, oh face masks, nice pretty ones. And this is the Mercado Municipal, of course probably in every Mexican city you get one of them. Municipal market, like the main market where you can get food and other things. Oh crap, cars. So you've already heard me say copyrighted music, more than likely there will be that in there. So I'm gonna feature that in the main video. But you can buy, yeah, things like flowers, clothing, you can see there in the distance. And outside there's usually these kind of taquerias and local shops, restaurants. Oh, flowers seem to be a big thing here. <laughs> bye. You just heard a lady say bye. That's a funny thing I'm noticing here. And also when I was in Los Mochis, um, a lot of people sort of saying, you know, the usual hasta luego, adios. 
Dubai seems to be used much more here than in the south. I might be going crazy, probably it's used everywhere, but um, it's definitely something I'm noticing since I've been here. You'll notice that in a lot of modern, more modern, northern Mexican cities, you do get a lot of these wide main roads. It feels like kind of every road is one of those commercial corridors with, you know, shops everywhere. You don't get those kind of narrow colonial cobbled streets literally anywhere. <laughs> um, you know, it kind of feels like, um, being back in the UK actually, you know, where I'm from, there's a lot of streets like this in London that are just sort of average high streets with local independent businesses and so on. Okay, a stop I want to go to is to the left here, I believe. <laughs> Nino. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> okay, this is our first stop. Um, I will probably feature this in the next one. As you can see, there's a lot of street art down here. I'm not sure if this is the right place because on online, <laughs> there are umbrellas up here. It's like an art um, alleyway, um, but I'm not sure how out of date those images and information are. If you saw my Brazil videos, there was a place called Beco do Batman in San Paolo, which is kind of very similar. But this one looks like it's maybe seen better days. Like I said, again, it could be actually another road, but I don't think it is. I think it's this one. Who's this guy? He looks familiar. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments. And there's one up here that looks like a Japanese anime girl. Actually, quite a few of them kind of look like anime. So colourful, isn't it? Wow. I love those eyes and they've got like aliens in the pupils or what look like aliens. Now we're heading into one of the most well-known colonial buildings in Mexico. Obviously that was a joke. There are some buildings I've noticed here that are like this that have homeless people living in. Um, obviously I don't want to intrude. Oh, there's a cat up there. Maybe we'll take a look at this next time as well. It's good to use this kind of video actually as a bit of a scouting mission for my regular video to check out certain destinations. Beautiful. Again, I was joking. <laughs> Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's what it's called. It is the right place. El Calejón del Arte. Another place there for weddings and quinceañeras. Madalene.
weddings, more quinceañeras, nice. As we've seen already, crossing roads can be a bit of a precarious moment. One thing I do feel here, ever since I've been here, it very much reminds me of areas of Medellin in Colombia. I can't really put my finger on why that is. I think it's just a general feeling. Calle Chihuahua, oh sorry, Calle Chihuahua. You know what, I've always said the word Calle as Calais in my head. <laughs> I don't know why. Right, let's cross. There's the Mercado over there. Right, which road is this? Chihuahua. Yeah. quiet as you come out of that central bit and the, the madness that goes on there. Taqueria, El Basson. Beef in Sonora, a bit like Chihuahua, is uh, a staple part of the local gastronomy in addition to some different dishes that I've never seen before in Mexico I'm sure they do exist in some form or another but you know I think probably even the most gastronomically committed Mexican wouldn't necessarily be aware of every single dish that's available in Mexico Hola, buenas tardes. oh she was nice Another big crossroads, 90 degree corners. The, um, if you look at the uh, sort of urban plan of a city like Obregón, in a similar way to others, a bit like Los Mochis, it does look like that sort of typical American modern grid system with those 90 degree bends. And from above, it, it does kind of look quite plain with one particular epic monument which oh it's over that way right i need to go down this road um, <laughs> my sense of direction is improving since i've been doing these videos um yeah i think we're gonna get there i'm at 14 minutes and 51 seconds um let's 
good to have a walk around like this. Get some exercise after editing three videos last week and sitting on my ass. Shadows are my enemy. Blue skies and greens and blues are not. I think I should be able to get to an area a little bit further out as well, um, just sort of past where I'm staying, which um, I briefly touched on at the end of the Lost Mochis video. Uh, you'll see what I mean later, hopefully. If you're enjoying Obligon, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, click the little bell <laughs> if you want. And you'll see some more of these coming from Mexico. I walked past here yesterday. There are, you know, like I said, modern buildings, but this kind of concrete, and also like that abandoned one earlier, you know, it's got kind of almost like this European, close to even like brutalist style as well, which, you know, for me, I normally associate with the UK, uh, Eastern Europe, post-war European architecture. You see a lot of that in countries like Russia, Belarus, Serbia. Never really seen much of it in Mexico. Okay, brilliant, we're gonna make it to one of the top tier elite spots in Obregón. Okay, Calle Sonora, there's Oxo over there. There's another average alleyway. No kissing alley here, or whatever it is in Guanajuato. If you're from Obregón, let me know what you think of your city. I would be curious to hear because I think Sonora for me is one state that it's a bit of an enigma, which I'll touch on. Uh, gracias. Uh, which I'll touch on next time, both in terms of people visiting Sonora, but also comments that I've had or people that I know on YouTube from Sonora. Okay, let's go. Um, I would be curious to hear your thoughts on where you come from before I do the next one. Prepare for absolute top tier Mexico. The building behind that tree, that's what I'm talking about. This structure kind of reminds me of something you would see in like the center of Berlin or Paris or something. Reminds me very much of that. Now there is a flag on Sundays. That's the only day that the flag is flying. You will see that in the next video because I did manage to get the drone up yesterday while it was up there.
is this another copper piping theft issue, like in um, Culiacan? Possiblemente. There's a horsey right now. I have no idea who that is. And that's a good thing. Travel is all about discovery. Of course, I will find that out before I film the regular one. Some more graffiti over there. I can't really see what it says from here. Something about police and rights, I think behind that line, the line's in the way. Um, is that to do with the femicide graffiti again? I don't know. There's a government building there. There's a biblioteca library up there. Once again, beautifully colored pink magenta flowers in Northern Mexico, as well as yellows and different colors as well. Yeah, that are just so vibrant. By the way, my back is dripping with sweat underneath my bag. How attractive. The heat in Sonora, yeah, it's probably about 35 degrees. This is being filmed on May the 8th, I think. It's not too bad, to be honest. It's no hotter than anywhere else I've been. It's certainly not on 46 Celsius Monterey levels that I had a few years ago. So this, you might be able to tell by the cross on the top, is the cathedral in Probably gone and I just love it it's pyramid shaped construction started in 1977 it's the Sagrado Corazón de Jesus Catedral looks like there's something going on so we'll go in there in the next video hopefully it's just another example of that modern style of architecture that's so different up this way of Mexico really shows a different side to Mexico that it isn't all 1500 Spanish cathedrals you know as much as I like them there's difference to it it's even a little bit sort of brutalist with the concrete you know I believe that is part of the building which was previously on this site So yeah, as I said, the plan is to start the next video at the Catedral. That'll be coming up next. Over on that building over there, I can't remember the building, but it's got a rainbow flag at the front. I think apart from Mexico City, I haven't seen anything in relation to pride, you know. I don't know if it's to do with that. I'm assuming so. I've got new glasses, but I still can't see the writing on the front of that building. Okay, I think this is where we want to go. Got five minutes left. Let me know in the comments from what you've seen so far. Would you come to Obregón? I know it might not be, you know, something that you would purposely choose as a destination, but you know, a destination and sort of traveling long term are different things.
Is this what you expected Obregon to be like? Is it similar to Los Mochis? Could be a can. Okay, let's go down here. Yeah, so what I touched on in Los Mochis, very briefly at the end, if you're very eagle-eyed, um, there was a scene right at the end where I showed some shots of an area in Los Mochis that was seemed to be quite wealthy. Lots of really nice houses. A lot of them are very big, with the typical bars on the windows. Um, a lot of them, of course, have numerous Mexi dogs, or hellhounds, as I call them. I love them, really. They're amazing. They really like a different breed. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people may think that somewhere like Obregón is this absolute desert wasteland. And, you know, because it's Mexico, people think, oh, poverty, disaster. But just like in Culiacán and Los Mochis there, seems to be wealth a lot of kind of high walled houses with big gates i know in culiacan particularly you know some of that might come from cartel wealth i'm not sure if that's a similar case here let me know down below it's really nice isn't it i've stayed in so many places in mexico that are just these ginormous mexican houses you know with so many rooms and just so posh <laughs> I guess in Mexico there's a lot more room than where I'm from big driveways big gates nicely designed with very smooth walls and things like that and just look how pretty it is oh there's Farmacy Guad Farmacy Guadalajara <laughs> that's my favourite thing to say in Spanish by the way <laughs> Stunning colours. Oh, and a butterfly. It even reminds me of maybe Polanco in Mexico City with, as you can see over the road, you know, most likely an expensive suit shop. Come on, people. So I've been in Obregón for just over a week actually, uh, in real time, <laughs> and I've got to say I love it, <laughs> unsurprisingly. it's. Um, it, I said to myself yesterday on Instagram that it feels like I've lived here for a long time because of its familiarity, not only with northern Mexico but kind of, as I said earlier, but I'm not even joking, where I'm from, an average, fairly modern city in London you know it's not really a city it's just part of the city it's a little bit gritty a little bit dirty a little bit hardcore and badass but I'm fine with that so I will see you in the next video where we will explore Obregón in much more detail I'm looking forward to filming it Oh, he's selling mops. At least he's not collecting colchones. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go to Pharmacy Quad. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you've enjoyed it. Catch you later.